Have Asian American men been labeled as the social untouchables in America? Uh, apparently, John Cho seems to think so. But what we want to ask is, has anything significantly changed in the recent years? Yeah, John Cho recently gave a spicy quote to the LA Times in a podcast interview. He says, no one knows this except Asian American men, but for at least a portion of our lives and our pocket is a clenched fist and we're ready to fight because people have been ishing on our heads our whole lives. And I feel like there's this violent streak in so many Asian American men because of that anger, because of that emasculation. And this is different from our fathers. Our fathers did not grow up like that. They come here and experience racism, but nobody's changing their minds about who they are. My dad's Korean. He's a man. He's proud of who he is. He knows who he is. And you can ching chong him to death, but he doesn't give an ish. But us, his sons were different. We, when we were soft and malleable, we got told we weren't worth anything and we believed him. My dad, he doesn't have any of that. Whoa, so eloquently said uh, from John Cho, man. And you know, it hits different when John Cho says this kind of stuff because obviously he's a famous, good looking actor that has played very good roles that represented Asian men very well in Hollywood. So shout out to him. Obviously, he's like, you know, he, yeah. he's not a guy who needs to say stuff yeah, like this. Yeah, I mean, and John Cho is 50 years old. So he grew up at a time where America was very different. And probably there was even way more racism against Asian guys or just racism against anybody in general, obviously, compared to the younger you get the less there is yeah, but of course like he's got crazy stats like six foot six pack worth 16 million dollars it's different than i guess what like a reddit guy saying it yeah and i love also how he touched on like kind of the difference between the generations of being american and having these expectations and being an immigrant and not having those expectations and somehow sometimes that's actually helpful but anyways we're going to get into the multitude of reactions here we're going to try to have a fun and productive conversation <laughs> about something so spicy too yeah who from silly to serious guys we are the hot pop boys and we're breaking it down make sure you like subscribe turn on your notifications man real quick andrew do you agree disagree or kind of agree that asian men since i guess we landed in america i don't know whatever like let's just say 50 years ago had a scarlet letter stamped on our foreheads that said social untouchable i'm not saying that stamp didn't fade you know depending on if you're younger you know you have less of the stamp but there was just a stamp on the forehead that was invisible andrew if we look at his historical societies there have always been hierarchies in india there's a caste system there's a class of people called the untouchables they're usually sanitation workers their children get discriminated against in feudal japan tokugawa shogunate there was a group of people called the bura bura kumin they were the son of undertakers butchers executioners their dads were covered in blood their children were deemed untouchables yeah. deemed out uh, outcasts of society second third class citizens and even if you're from hebei province in china and you go to beijing and you say you got this great idea people are going to be like yeah but you're from hubei what could you possibly know we don't trust you so there's hierarchies and i guess what i'm saying is do you think it's possible that asian guys got stamped with the untouchable stamped unbeknownst to us socially by the way i think that there has always been status rankings amongst people and yes as immigrants oftentimes you start at the bottom now maybe socially asian guys definitely or underrated. I think that no matter how high Asian guys r rose up the ladder or where you think they got to, they still had a little bit of that letter on them, a little bit of that stamp. I think it shrinks. I think it's smaller for some people. I think it's fading away in general. But yes, I could agree. Do you think it changed for the 50-year-olds, which is John Cho, to the 40-year-olds, to the 30-year-olds, to the 20-year-olds, to now like a kid who's 10? Do you think it's possible that it reduced by like 20 to 25% per year? So now I guess like theoretically a 15 year old kid is going through it at like a 35% yeah. level yeah. instead of a hundred percent level. I think, I think it goes down like for sure. It goes, choo, 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 Do you think how different is it for Asian men and Asian women? Because I think a lot of guys would say that Asian men get it worse or more, a larger percentage of Asian guys feel that scarlet letter of social untouchable. Mm -hmm. But some Asian women say they feel it too, right? Because uh, what's her name? Joanna Gaines just came out and said growing up in Texas, she's 44. She really felt the need to push away her career inside and not talk about it and not be proud of it yeah i think that women asian women experience it too of course they do um i think that maybe a higher percentage of asian men feel it on a more intense level but yeah i think everybody asian feels. do you it. think it's possible that nobody there's an asian guy that was born in america that doesn't feel it i was thinking of like maybe a really good looking filipino guy from california or something like that maybe from an enclave from hawaii you know what i'm saying like 
places that are like so Asian. No, it's almost I, like everybody's Asian. I mean, we've met Asian guys. Sometimes they're not always that good looking, but they just kind of have put themselves in this mindset or in this sphere around these group of friends where maybe they just didn't really feel it. And then even if they do experience racism, they don't process it the same as someone who's very sensitive to it because essentially the same thing can happen to different people but different people process it differently and have different perspectives. Right, on and it. different people have different survival exactly. techniques. They even turn a blind eye to something, even if it's in their face, exactly. just because they need to feel good about yeah. themselves. But, right. But I, I will say this though: I think, in my opinion, ninety-three percent of Asian males, they can, whether they say they felt it themselves or not, they would be like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." I get what John Cho's talking about. Yeah. Because there have been so many books about it, Andrew. Eddie Huang made Fresh Off the Boat all about this topic. David Chang talked about it. Interior Chinatown. I think even Ben Ballers talked about it before. Yeah, no. Every famous Asian guy who keeps it real has said it. And John Cho's keeping it super real in this yeah, podcast. Yeah, it felt like there was a scarlet letter on a lot of Asian guys' foreheads that said, you're a social untouchable, you have a small weenie, and you're just like a whack worker nerd and... I'm going to take your girl. Man, what a visual. Jeez, it says all that <laughs> yeah, on my head? But, but, but by the way, that stamp is fading over time. However, some people, Andrew, even if it fades, it's like they're still operating as if the stamp is full force. Right, check it right now. Oh my, Somebody said, head? it's messed up how Asian guys got treated, especially when John Cho was young, but anger is not the solution. Andrew, is it true? I mean, different people process this marginalization, this social marginalization, this way or that way. I mean, I think... A little bit of anger is healthy because that's natural. That's the so, human emotion so to may, getting treated bad, right? So maybe it can drive you. You know, maybe you're like Arthur, that Arthur meme with your fist, and you're just like, oh, I want to do something. And then you go <laughs> and do something, and it, you, it changes your situation, and you're productive, right? Obviously, when John Cho is talking about violence, I don't think he's referring to the most recent tragedies of Asian men. I think he's just literally talking about that everyday feeling of wanting to be violent. Right, the like, feeling of being a social outcast. Yeah, and wanting to right? lash out and feeling undesired and feeling un overlooked and underrated. Yeah, but I think different people process it differently because, Andrew, I remember even at church growing up, you know, me and you, we've been on this topic talking about it explicitly, but I remember some guys, they just killed that desire to be anybody yeah. because they knew that they were going to get pushed back on that journey up the ladder, so they just killed those dreams. Dude, if you just play the cut and you stay humble and you don't want to do anything great, you're not going to face as much uh, resistance right. as if you're trying to really do something like... You know, and get known and and, and it's sort of like that one Kendrick quote, quote where he's like, uh, "Life's so crazy when you want these things, but what if you don't want those things? So you don't have to go on that journey." I'm pretty somebody sure that's said, one of the uh, things that Buddhism teaches. Somebody you. said most Asians are still living in La La Land and they don't even want to talk about the pain when it's a group of Asian guys all together. It seems like so taboo, but we're all going through it with this scarlet letter on our foreheads that's invisible. What the f? Yo, honestly, straight up. A lot of Asian guys have some whack conversations with each other, man. I think that's part of the issue. We're not talking about the real stuff with each other. We're not talking about how to live a better life, how to be happier, okay? Uh, we're not talking about our position in society. We can't even agree. Some people are like, oh, this conversation sounds uncool. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Why are you guys always talking about hey, this, Hey, let's man? just go back to discussing all the micro nuances of our Saturday rec league, Bro, even though we're in copper division. If you don't talk about this stuff, how are you supposed to figure it out? What are you talking about? This is like discussion. This no, is like this a is your life. Literally, guys, I know it's uncomfortable. These, this is our lives, and this is a macro trend Yo, that we all just got subjected to, whether we wanted it, to or not. When Asians are like, "Dude, why, why are you talk? Why are we even talking about this?" Do man? you think it's the because the association of like an incel or a whack guy talking about it? You know how like a lot of people think that people who do the talking to have an action and the people who are doing all the action don't do the talking or yeah. the, the no. rumination. I, I think a lot of people think that the more you talk, the more of a loser you are. Now, I don't think you are inherently a loser. If the only thing you do in your life is talk and comment and complain, you might be on the path to becoming a loser. But if you do things in your life, which I feel like we do, I do, you do, and John Cho absolutely does in his life, then dude, you can talk about it. Right. That's not all we're doing here, but yes, you need to talk things out. And by the way, like we said, there have been so many Asian American male celebrities from all corners of life that have come out and said something about this. Obviously, they don't all say the quote exactly like this, but they've alluded to it. Jeremy Lin as well. Somebody said, I had a clenched fist for a long time, and I still do. Sometimes I'm even jumpy and paranoid. What can I do? Is this good or bad? Man, this sucks. But what I would say is sometimes, like, you know, growing up, maybe... 
As an Asian guy, you feel undesired, overlooked, underrated. But then there's another side of it where maybe you are still being loved and desired by another side. Now, whether that's your family that did church. support you, a church, or maybe like a significant other or a girl that somebody was giving you some love. And, and here's the issue. Now, that way, if you have love and hate or love and resistance, then it kind of balances out. Because you're saying you have downside, yeah. but you also have upside. Yeah, but you have the energy from the love and it can drive you through the resistance. However... Some Asian guys, unfortunately, their family's not very loving. Maybe mm. they didn't feel desired growing up. So that is a big part that I feel like, dang, man. You're if, saying that these, these people that are saying, I still got my fist clenched and I'm jumpy. It's like they didn't get enough upside. They didn't get enough love. Yeah, yeah. And also jumpiness, it comes from not being prepared and not being experienced. So if you're still jumpy after 40 years, something's seriously wrong. You probably need to go to therapy because like you can't still be jumpy after right. all this time. You got to get into some sports. Yeah. You got to get into some Muay Thai, some martial basketball, arts, man. battle rapping, whatever you need to. <laughs> I mean, like, listen, there's a ton of things that I might not even be naming chess. What, no, you know, whatever like, puts you in a practice and sparring situation of an mm. adrenaline rush. It doesn't actually have to be right. martial arts sparring, but it can be some type of you're, sports. You're saying training, cultivating that fight or flight response so you don't feel so helpless. Yes. Somebody said uh, Asian men are not proud at, just like their counterparts in other races. They'd be willing to play their entire group out to move up a few rungs on the ladder, or maybe at best they only care about their own specific type of Asian and not all other Asian guys, even though they're all going through the same social David, untouchableness. David, this kind of leads to something that you always talk about is like the camaraderie amongst Asian men and how that needs to be better in order for Asian guys to get yeah, better. I, I would say that it's pretty bad, like... It, it could be a lot better. I'm not saying it hasn't gotten better over the years. Like I said, that scarlet letter on the forehead has just faded over the years as well. Uh, but it, it could be better. Yeah. Like, I just think that people have to understand we're all going through this same thing. But, and instead of looking at it with a scarcity mindset, more of like a growth how, mindset. How does it get better when Asian guys also come from different backgrounds? Like, they're just different types of Asians. I feel like within micro groups, like Wonjonese or Fujinese people, they're more proud yeah. and stick together more. But like... I mean, this is going to yeah. lead us to our another point, but I've, I've seen a lot of Asian guys put aside their, like, petty historical differences in, in like, uh, frats or gangs or, like, companies a little bit. Oh, gangs, huh? But, yeah, yeah, I do agree with this comment. I think every group has confident, unconfident people, people who are backstabbers willing to sell out the group, but I do think the ratio distribution in the Asian-American community definitely seems possibly smaller on, like, yeah. the... The, the proud guy side. Like, even to this day, I still meet some kind of whack acting Asian dudes in uh, New York. They're like, no, I'm not really part of the Asian community or I don't really care about that kind of stuff. I'm like, I'm like, right, oh, dude. do you think the community you're trying to be like, like, like loves you back? I'm like, hey, I don't know, man, it could, but... If you're killing it and what you're doing, fine, whatever, we don't need you. But if you're not... I feel bad for you because you're missing out on a lot. Somebody said, uh, the only people who are comfortable to stand up for themselves are former Asian thugs, it seems like. Or maybe frat guys in the boardroom that have been trained in an elite way. Or, of course, gang guys in the streets. Yeah, I also would throw in, like, bros, like, athlete bros. People who have been on teams before and kind of gone to some type of battle together. Right. Now, I, I don't think that those are the only examples because, obviously, those things come with a whole world attached to them. But it seems like those worlds do train you for conflict right mm -hmm. as an asian guy yeah and they're also hyper tribal like if you're in an asian gang like i know that not only asian people can join asian gangs sometimes but essentially you got to be down for the asian squad in some sense like you got to say i got an asian squad i don't yeah. know that could be a work squad that could be a pickleball squad that could be a, a jogging squad right I mean, by the way guys we're using very extreme examples i mean try to calibrate this to the the to the whimsicalness of your own life if you live a whimsical life but i think everybody can study stand-up comedy especially crowd work listen to jay-z like you mm. said play physical sports uh, muay thai i don't know somebody says uh you know that scarlet letter branding on our foreheads as asian men has begun to fade but i think there's still going to be struggles because some asian men are still just not working on themselves i don't know if it's because they're just like never been taught that they don't value that or even though that mark on their forehead is fading they think that it hasn't so they're almost like a traumatized dog that can't leave the cage even once the cage is lifted and so uh, I, I i always say that now is the best time to be an asian guy in america there is no better time in history. Like, with all the opportunities and the knowledge, 
the knowledge at your fingertips to make yourself better, to do better, to figure out, get training, to find community. It is the best time in history. So if you're still having issues right now, then you're not doing something right. Right. So you're saying, even though we brought up the whole concept of this letter on the foreheads that's invisible, it's as faded as it's ever been in history. Yeah. Yeah. It's as good as it's going to get for now, guys. What do you think people are? Do you think some people are waiting for the, the, that mark to fully fade to 100% level? Bro. Like, what do they need the opacity level to be I at? I think, and this is one of my last points, but you have to accept some slight, in my opinion, like foreignness that people perceive you with. I'm not saying you have to feel that way, but being a child of immigrants, right. you were raised Especially by immigrants. Especially from the Eastern Hemisphere, living in the Western Hemisphere. Like you have to just budget that you're partially seen as an immigrant. And that's right. where the professional foreigner comes along. I with still you. identify as an immigrant. Honestly, I'm just like, I'm not yeah, an immigrant. If I call myself an immigrant, I'm I not still like, identify as an immigrant. I and I think myself. that that's why I do make an effort to like learn the language and learn various cultures and stuff like yeah, that. But I'm, I'm like, yeah, but I'm saying like, the same once you accept that and you're not so uh, caught up in like, I'm American because American it's, fleeting it's inconsistent people don't all see you as that but what you always are are asian and you're always a little bit of an immigrant if your parents are immigrants yeah now, and it doesn't mean that you're not proud to be an american yeah you're not but i'm just saying come in with that mindset and it's humbling and it actually allows you to go work on yourself in different ways because that american entitlement is actually going to prevent you from making some changes. Because, yep, you're going to be in, feel like you're entitled and not have to do the... Well, you're going to feel like, well, a white guy doesn't have to have a six-pack and make six figures to, to like, come up and have his stats up. And I'm yeah. like, I don't know. No, no, and I'm not saying that even as an Asian guy, you have to get a six-pack to be equal with that white guy. But... You might want to think about it, yeah, though. Yeah, but if, even if you just get the six-pack, it can't hurt. Right, it's not going to be against you. You can't be like, oh, I want to stay. Might, maybe if you get that, it might even elevate you over that guy. Who knows? Maybe it wasn't that big of a deal. But you'll never know unless you do it. Somebody said, what can Asian men do better? Ultimately, um, what John Cho was saying was very true for his age range, 40 to 50. Obviously, it faded throughout the decades, but it's probably still truish. Some more for others than others. And, you know, it depends on what crowd you hang out, what states you live in, what cities, what neighborhoods within the city you hang out in, what's your own personal stats. But essentially, it's still kind of true that this thing is on our foreheads. Um, people, Some people choose not to acknowledge it. Some people choose back to go back to Asia. Yeah. Some people... You know, they do this, they do that. Uh, yeah. I guess for me, one thing I always encourage people to do is see a lot of reps. One of the main things in life is you have to see a lot of patterns and you have to have a large sample size and a high volume of any sort of rep. Then you'll what does see, that mean? like, what does even that when mean? I see, Be specific. Like, like, to see the whole spectrum of something, it's just like when I play basketball, I play so much basketball and I've played with so many different types of people. I've seen, like, Asian guys who look like pro players who are playing look exactly like slam dunk characters all picturesque and I've seen the guy like cross multiply so now I know what the spectrum is but a lot of times when you don't even go out and see the world you don't even know what's possible yeah I would say this is my short list of things that Asian guys can do right now is one prepare yourself not be shocked when you're shocked you're paralyzed. You're in shock. You What's can't, the thing on my forehead? Yeah. Ah! You don't know what to do. You're like, oh my gosh, that was a trigger. And you're like, no, you got to know your triggers if you're an adult. Come on, man. Stop freezing up because if you freeze up, you can't make adjustments. All right. Also, uh, understand that you are partially viewed as a little bit of a foreigner. And that's unfortunate, but it can be also empowering if you use it the right way. Because at the end of the day, you're like, I know who I am. I'm not relying on you to tell me I'm American. I'm Asian American. I'm Asian, whatever. You know, contribute to representation in any way that you can. It doesn't mean go into entertainment and you have to be the host of some TV show, but you can represent in your own way. Be a leader mm, and you gotta step in up. whatever your lane is. Yeah, whatever your workplace, your little work group, your workout group, whatever it is. Also- Don't uh, feel American as you are, but don't feel like an entitled American. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you don't want to lose. You don't guys. Dude, as, I see that a lot. As bro. Asians. Yeah. Yeah. Yo. My uh, dorky white friend who's really out of shape. He like got a pretty cute Asian girl or something. So I should get a cute Asian girl. Cause I've been his best friend for 20 years and we're pretty similar. Like who, it's just not going to work like who that. Who cares? Bro. Who cares? I know you see things, but, but just focus on yourself and doing it because you never know where it's going to take you. It could even elevate you beyond what you think. Oh, I actually think it's really important to spend time in Asia, not just as a tourist. Do mm. not do Asia like a tourist. Mm. You're not a tourist. Yeah. Asia is actually ultimately where 
all your ancestors are from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also, like, Asian American guys, together, we need to be better teammates and have more camaraderie. It doesn't mean you have to be best friends. It doesn't mean you only have to compliment each other. But if you have a group of friends and you guys are close and do things together, then have these conversations, you know. Yeah, I mean, maybe if you're not a sports guy and you don't want to study uh, Phil Jackson, Bulls, or Popovich's system, or Tom Brady on the Patriots— Study your best running like Bro, esports team and what kind of like I've, teamwork flow and who's the director and who's the coach and how does all they get everybody to buy in. Do you guys know what non Asians say about Asians sometimes? I've had literal non Asians tell me, yeah, dude, I don't know why, but it seems like all the Asian guys I know or Asian people I know, they just like compete with each other. Like they're not cool with each other. Like they think that they can only be like the only one. And I'm yeah. just like, dude, people are starting to notice how little we work together. That's crazy. On a do, social level, on a social level. Do we even know how much we don't work with each other? Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, think about that, guys. Um, but anyways, uh, you know, we're just going to wrap it up there. Let us know in the comments down below. And by the way, we think. were talking about Asian American guys because I could see some people in the comments being like, what are you talking about? I see Asians from Asia working together all the time. Yeah, of course, because they're from Asia. Yeah. We're talking about Asian Americans growing yeah. up primarily in non-Asian context, yeah, yeah, by the yeah, way. Yeah. How, how do you build that camaraderie when you all grow up in America, not from Asia, right? Uh, but yeah, anyways, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about what we said, about what John Cho said. Um, and, and let us know, do you think that Asian guys really were slapped with this kind of stamp on their head? And is it fading nowadays? Obviously, I think it's fading, but how much? And what can you do about it? And how you can add to it? And how can you benefit from it? Right. Is another question. Andrew, what about some guys that are like, dude, whether the stamp was there or not, my whole like way of doing it was just never acknowledging it. I guess if you... If you just did things, though, if you took action and you didn't acknowledge it, I think it could have worked. But um, for the most part, you got to acknowledge the problem in order to solve it. So Yeah, at least but, in a macro sense for everybody. I think you could be okay for yourself, but it doesn't help everybody, but that's not everybody's goal. But anyway, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Keep it civil. I always know there's room for disagreement and to add a supplement and say we missed out on this. We probably did. Until next time, we'd hop out, boys. We out. Peace.